Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the, uh, I should actually show, so I'm going to alt, hopefully this doesn't mess up and it catches on the recording. So we're alt tabbing here to look at the challenge bracket and see what happened. So here you've got Sponge and Nagmar. This is the games being played right here. So, and this is, uh, so this is the match being played. I'm not going to move it because it's the spoilers, but there's also like, so it's, you got, the, it's in the format. <laughs> I'm talking over myself a bunch of things and you can all see everything that happened here and also the cool icons that everybody chose on Chalong. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Chalong? Chalong. I'll just call it Chal. It's on Chal. Anyway, so you've got the top bracket, you've got the lower bracket, so technically winner's bracket and then the loser's bracket. The So this goes all the way through and then you have the person that, on the top. Whoever wins this matchup is basically guaranteed to go to the finals. Whoever wins this bracket also has another opportunity at the finals. So basically it's like here you get a buy, here they might get eliminated, and then the person here kind of gets a buy for whatever happens, as you can see over to the right, if that makes any sense. So effectively, whoever wins this out has to be eliminated in a double best of five. This is the first best of five that's happening between the winner here, Sponge, and Agmar. And whoever wins this will have to face whoever comes out of the, the secondary bracket, the loser's bracket, Hopefully you guys follow that all. I know it's a bit confusing, but uh, I guess that's the nature of Infested Cup. This is Infested Eclipse, by the way, a more familiar map of recent play. We both players opening up, nothing too crazy. I like the double blockade here from uh, Nagnar deciding to go for front door block. Actually, front door block on opposite side. We're seeing some more meta develop. Overlord spreading out across. One critical thing on this map is, is there's no advantage in capturing infested command centers that are out in the field just because they don't exist, which I'm wondering if that's going to result in more of a stereotypical ZVZ match underneath a lot of it. So it'll be kind of Zerglings with infested Terrans diving at each other. It looks like we're seeing a spawning pool in the upper right for Sponge. Sponge opening up, I think that was a 12th pool. I don't know, I lost track of it. If I was a skilled enough StarCraft player, I'd be able to say it definitively. I think this is a 9 pool, um, but with kind of a altered build order because the extractor that's happening in the midst of it. And first, Infested Terran's already out. And actually, because of the skip, the Infested Terran's on the right. Is he going to go? Actually, no. He can actually slip through. They are small units, like Zerglings, I believe. So the Infested Terran's going to go sneak into the main. Drones trying to pull off the line, trying to get a good split. Uh, Sponge trying to get a good split, instead of lining up a huge amount of drones. So there was an initial strike, also catching half the spawning pool. And now, all of a sudden, Sponge behind in his overall uh, unit count. He's actually trying to drop. Oh, I don't like this play. Dropping three creep colonies to try to create a bit of a wall. Second Infested Terran walking up. He's gonna go ahead and skip cancellation there. A lot of drones lined up some Zerglings planted as well. And the drones trying to flee, they're gonna to try to buy some time, but the Infested Terrans, as you can see, just as fast as the Zerglings. And the Infested Terran doing a bit of a Zoidbra action. Sponge trying to split, but he's not mining while all this is happening. He's only mining, it looks like, with two drones and a single drone on gas. Now he needs to make decisions because that something colony is there. And so he's gonna take out a single Zergling and that something colony. Are there more infested Terrans making their way up? It looks like more, two more infested Terrans scooting their way across. But thus far, all of the economic disruption happening inside Sponge bases, inside Sponge's base. And so Nagnar ending up with a sizable advantage. He's already got 13 drones and feeling comfortable with it. Some Zerglings trying to block the ramp here. And actually, what I would play from... So what is this? Three infested Terrans? I almost wonder if three infested Terrans on the front door with the splash damage would be critical to get rid of the command centers on the opposite side. I feel like that would be a sizable advantage. So Nagnar... Losing one Infested Terran right there to those three Zerglings. So big win for Sponge. Is he just going to blow up? Uh, does blow up and takes out uh, those still no Infested Terrans being produced from Sponge uh, on the opposite side of the match. We do see another one moving across in a Tech 2 layer. So it's interesting to see how the meta shifts from map to map. Uh, kind of in the midst of this. A single drone trying to create a blockade of this ramp. A little bit of a smaller ramp so that might have been possible. This something colony going to go ahead and blow up. There's two something colonies in the back lot, and that's more drones that have been expended. And again, just because it's a single hit and there's still splash damage, I like that Sponge is spreading those something colonies out and keeping them away from his drone lines. Two more Zerglings uh, coming across, but I just feel like it's too little too late. And behind this, Nagnar with double the worker count, also going to grab his natural expansion, also has Zerglings blocking his own ramp to provide a bit of defense. Yeah, I feel like aggression, early aggression, pays dividends in this matchup. He's trying to get his own layer, so layer up, spotty pool at half health. So that get, uh, could get taken out. Let's see if Nagnar is able to spread these infested turrets out to not uh, have a accidental mutual explosion. I'm not sure what to call that. I should come up with a term for that. Having a bit of trouble, does blow up, clears the way for the wrist of the Zerglings, and let's see if he decides to go for that sunken colony or if he's gonna go the far way. It does look like he's going the far way around. 
Zergen getting initial hit. The drones scattering now. And is he going to go for the spawning pool? Nope. Not going to go for the spawning pool. Just going to dance around. Continue to disrupt mining time. This spire is trying to be created in the background. By the way, you have a spire already with a decent bit of time. Taking out the something colony right there. Another creep colony being planted on the ground. Some more infested terrans being produced on Nagnar's side of the map. But he's up 10 supply, which is huge in his EVZ. And absolutely an immense lead on infested Terran maps. Spire about halfway finished here. The Spire, not that all that far behind uh, as well, but right now everything looking nag in Nagnar's favor, in particular, getting this economic lead is just allowing him to produce additional infested Terrans. And this might be, so he's producing this Zergling right here to create this blockade, but I, honestly, I feel like this is an invitation. <laughs> Never mind. Command centers do not block on the Southern Ridge uh, like other buildings. There's somewhere there's a map that points all that sort of stuff out, and it's interesting to see. And I'm almost wondering what unit size Infested Terrans count as. Let's see if this Infested Terran makes it. It looks like three hits, and he's down. Another sunken colony being planted there. So now I know. Okay, so three hits are solid So uh, on the Infested Terran. They do, that makes sense. Sunken colonies do 20 base damage, so three sunken colonies seems to be the thing you want to have at range with sight to make sure to, as a protective defensive radius. However... An initial six mutals is being produced as a first infested Terran is being produced by Sponge. And unless this infested Terran ends up being an absolute miracle, I do not see Sponge winning, uh, coming out, sneaking out with this match. It looks like another infested Terran, though, was expended. So small mercies in this matchup. And this infested Terran might be able to sneak through, but mutalisks are already on the way. And yeah, the Spire's finished, but looks like a counter-producing Scourge. this is where it might turn into a, a typical... ZVZ, although the Mutalist is trying to chase down this Infested Terran, exploding it very rapidly. So six Mutalists diving up, this Overlord being attacked, and that might have been a mistake. But maybe with some Scourge, Sponge can equalize this. He's behind the overall drone count. Magnar, I don't think, is going to be dissuaded. He can eat the Scourge hit, and he, in fact, does. Unfortunately, the target's not landing on the same Mutalist. That does leave two of them uh, weakened, but it's still going to be three versus six. And these Mutalists have a lot of territory where they can run through and harass. Let's, it looks like they're going to peel back, maybe go after some Overlords, or maybe clear the way. They're going to start attacking these infested command centers. Magnar, I think I missed an Overlord being sniped someplace, because uh, he is currently in the red. Maybe that Overlord dying here was a little bit more significant than I thought. I was just misreading the supplies. But now these Mutalists engaging with the weakened and with the close spawn points. This is going to end up in Sponge's favor, but Sponge still down significant amounts of drones. And additional, it looks like Scourge being produced, so that's getting cleaned up. But three weak Mutalisks are starting to press forward. Infested Terran spreading across. That's going to pin the Mutalisks in a defensive situation. And it looks like uh, these two Infested Terrans managed to sneak through the line with their brethren. One remaining. And this is gas. Keep in mind that wasn't expended, that was not utilized in another manner for Nagnar. So Nagnar uh, not, not winning the game yet. But in a commanding position still, Scourge starting to dive forward. A bunch of creep colonies being dropped along with another hatchery. So Nagnar actually shelling up a little bit. Uh, instead of producing additional mutalisks, maybe because of that supply cap that happened in the background. He's got two bases, critically two gas mining. Scourge going to dive on the mutalisks that are spawning, but three mutalisks going to be able to get towards the main. They're finding all sorts of creep colonies produced here. No mutalisks to defend this drone line. So Sponge all of a sudden equalizing things. The mutalisks... Running back in, the drones trying to flee to the natural expansion as four colonies are being produced at all of these locations. Sponge now exiting, but that's giving him breathing room and time. And it, he's got additional mules that are starting to to sneak out. He's grabbing his natural hatchery. So despite having a battered economy, despite being down to nine drones, Sponge is making a match of it. And somehow has the lead, it looks like, in the overall mules count. Although I do not expect that to last. It looks like there's more health. I'm going to call this just more health than mules here on Nagnar's side of things. He's got 20 drones. <clears throat> is shelled up. He's trying to get his own uh, Scourge up, which are... This is like a true explosion match, right? Because now we have the Scourge of the Ground, which are the Infested Terrans, and you have the Infested Terrans of the Air, which are the Scourge. Equivalently. Although additional Overlords look like they're uh, being attacked here, so Nagnar gonna lose vision and also gonna lose that juicy, juicy supply, which he's gonna need to refill. More mules starting to roam out. They're looking for soft targets out in the field as well, but again, six Mutalisks now versus five. Nagnar also eating a bunch of free damage as he was just running through that. And an Infested Terran sneaking behind this. So Sponge actually making a match of this. Again, now the Scourge rejoining that fray. And that's going to turn the tides rather rapidly. Extremely rapidly. 
Let's see if the reinforcements are able to equalize things. But actually, Sponge doing a pretty good job in these trades. There's only going to be one Mutalisk that's that survives out of this, and he does have an Infested Terran in the wild. Never mind. I thought he was going to win that battle, but I'm uh, sorry, it was two. I didn't notice the two bunch. Two in the red. They're not long for life. They're not going to be able, uh, just a single shot from this Spore Colony would take either out. But now we have an Infested Terran on the exterior without a Creep Colony in place. There's a defensive Infested Terran for a counter explosion. This is a front door seal. This is kind of shows you the spawn advantage actually from the south because I think this is a front door seal at this direction, kind of just the way the buildings work from the north. Um, yeah, so they're going to go ahead and blow up on these Infested Command Centers. And this is an interesting situation, which once these three creep colonies are down, I'm wondering if Nagnar is going to opt to go ahead and lift them up because he might not want to lose these infested command centers uh, and basically not have the ability to build infested Terrans as far as a turnaround in this match. He still has a sizable supply lead. He has a sizable economic lead, but he hasn't been able to turn that into victory just yet. The Scourge is going to go ahead and wander through. It looks like they're turning around, able to take one Mutalist out, able to take a second Mutalist out, and looking for an opportunity to hit the third, some more additional Infested Terrans. Uh, and that's kind of interesting, actually. I didn't think about that aspect of this, is that Infested Command Centers cre create a perfect blockade when you're talking about the north, but and so it's like an automatic advantage starting in the bottom left spawn. Uh, and it lets you be a little bit more aggressive. Some Zerglings making their way across the map. The Mutalisks moving in. I don't see any anti-air at the natural expansion, and no anti-air at the main. I don't see any additional Mutalisks being produced. The Zerglings grouping up. Uh, their sun colonies are there though, and I think they are going to, and with that perfect blockade, they should be able to chew through those Zerglings fairly easily. Two drones down right there, and I think that is going to be it. So Magnar moving up, working on what is left of the drone, so it's just up to the Zerglings to win the game from here. And with those sun colonies in the way and the front door seal, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I actually think an Infested Terran might have actually, I missed an Infested Terran in that mix. Actually, it might have been an offensive Infested Terran, an accidental explosion from Magnar. Eating some friendly fire right there. These two Zerglings right there, but that's GG from Sponge, nevertheless. Going to move on to game two. Keep in mind, I believe this is best of five in this portion of the bracket. And it's going to be best of five, uh, best of five from here on out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.